Uh, I'll no, now go ahead and introduce our next speaker. That's Raminder Singh from Indiana University. So Raminder is working with P.I. Gus Everard at the University of, uh, of Michigan and the Dark Energy Survey team. So the Dark Energy Survey, as most of you probably know, is a very large um, astronomical project worldwide. Um, components in Brazil and Chile, the United States. We have at least two different principal investigators that each have their own allocations on Exceed for different components of dark energy surveys. So it's a it's a large project. One of the uh, aspects is is image processing. So taking the nightly images and running kind of filtering algorithms and things on them, and then restoring um, the data in dark energy survey. Uh, Raminder is going to tell tell us about his work with with Gus. There are also significant gateway development aspects uh, to this work that ECSS has been helping with. Um, so with that, I'll let Raminder take it away. Yes, thanks, Nancy, for giving me a chance to present. So uh, as you described uh, about the DES project, so I I work with one one of the groups uh, um, in the DES consortium. So, which is called uh, uh, Dark Energy Simulation Group. So, uh, the objective of uh, this group is to create uh, uh, synthetic skies uh, for uh, for astronomy pipelines and uh, uh, to uh, uh, to generate uh, data catalogs uh, uh, to measure the quality of. Uh, uh, Quality of uh, quality attributes uh, uh, of uh, uh, of the sky. So I'll start with uh, uh, describing uh, what are the project objectives, and uh, then uh, I'll introduce the ECSS work I'm doing with the group. So uh, Dark Energy Survey is the first project to combine four different. Uh, Statistical uh, methods uh, for dark matter and dark energy. So it was it it's a uh, 5,000 square degree uh, survey for cosmic uh, structure traced by galaxies. Um, so the simulation uh, group uh, focus is to generate those uh, synthetic skies um, so that uh, you can verify. Uh, these uh, uh, like the the data uh, which is going to be produced by the uh, camera when it comes uh, online. So uh, this diagram describes uh, the complete uh, uh, process flow uh, which uh, which we are working on from last one and a half year. Um, so uh, the uh, uh, so we started uh, uh, by taking the N-body simulations uh, to run on uh, Ranger. Uh, so these uh, uh, these blue uh, blue circles are the codes uh, uh, which uh, we are using uh, with little or no modifications, um, and the uh, uh, Cylinders are the data produced at every step. Um, so currently, we are running this uh, n-body simulation uh, on Ranger, and we are almost ready to run on Trussell. So, and then uh, uh, the, these light cones uh, uh, data files are generated, which are then moved to Slack for post-processing, um, where uh, where we uh, we are doing this. Uh, uh, hello findings and uh, uh, Adel's uh, empirical tuning uh, to uh, create uh, uh, galaxy catalogs. So, um, so this project uh, uh, started as a ECSS support request. Uh, which uh, uh, initially Dora worked with the group uh, to create the project plan, and uh, then um, one of the main goals uh, for uh, for this project was to automate uh, uh, their 
their job run on Ranger so that uh, these uh, job runs can be controlled uh, using uh, remote uh, portal environments or any any gateways. So um, uh, I have uh, uh, I have experience working with the other gateways like UltraScan and uh, GridCam uh, for the similar task. That that was the reason uh, I was um, mainly assigned to this project. So uh, on this slide, uh, I'll, um, these are the main goals uh, when I started with the project. Uh, first was to automate the job submission, which was uh, initially done manually um, uh, by the group, and then uh, uh, there there were other uh, challenges like uh, these jobs uh, are long-running jobs, which even cross the uh, queue time, uh, uh, queue wall time limit uh, uh, on Ranger. So these jobs can run up to five days, uh, and the wall time limit of Ranger is uh, uh, 48 hours. So we have to restart uh, these jobs using uh, uh, checkpoint files. So other, um, other than that, uh, there were these uh, um, data archival uh, tasks uh, to move the data to ranch for problems purposes and then uh, to Slack for post-processing. So uh, next two slides are mainly like I, I put together all the tasks uh, along with the the exceed uh, quarterlies, uh, like uh, what what were the tasks which we were able to achieve during uh, um, these periods. So the main uh, um, important milestone was uh, we were able to run uh, the full workflow um, using uh, um, Arauta uh, infrastructure um, uh, during, I think, uh, early uh, January of uh, uh, 2012. So then, uh, from then, we are uh, running all these workflows uh, uh, using uh, uh, using uh, Apache Rauta. So I'll, I'll introduce uh, uh, Apache Rauta briefly on uh, next slide. So uh, this slide uh, uh, shows uh, uh, shows the workflow uh, composition um, using uh, uh, Arauta's workflow modeler called Xpire. So uh, Arauta is a open source uh, uh, Apache project. Which uh, uh, um, so I'm I'm the contributor on that project. So um, but it's being used for uh, different gateways for uh, job submission and uh, file movement needs. So currently, the production gateways are GridCam, UltraScan. So, so we have uh, worked uh, with these gateways and uh, are able to solve a lot of uh, the uh, lot of exception handling, a lot of problem day-to-day -day problems which uh, we face. Uh, uh, like these gateways face the daily. So there, are, there is a uh, Globus Gram provider in Rauta which is being tested uh, re reasonably well. Um, so, so these uh, simulations. Uh, another main uh, thing was uh, um, uh, the goal for this uh, project was to run uh, multiple simulation in parallel. So the workflow. Uh, uh, is able to manage um, multiple jobs running on uh, uh, Ranger at the same time. So this uh, screenshot when I've taken, uh, there were four jobs running on different uh, stages. Um, so these colors are mainly the gray means uh, done and the green means uh, it's running. And uh, another important thing about uh, um, this uh, workflow run was uh, so we were able to uh, consume 
300,000 SUs uh, um, during uh, during a week, and uh, uh, we were able to produce 56 terabytes of data um, for post processing. So, um, in on this slide, I just described uh, like what are the uh, what are the those uh, codes which are uh, wrapped in in the workflow. Um, so, um, please feel free to ask me like how what is the registration step and how how uh, using a Apache Rout I'm able to uh, wrap different codes on different machines uh, um, and run run them remotely. So this slide is mainly um, so Brandon, um, one of the team members. Uh, so he put together to compare. So he was running the things manually before we integrated everything into uh, uh, into a workflow. So he he tried to compare how much uh, manual inefficiencies, like uh, the job finished at the midnight. So um, only he can start started next in the morning. But if things are running uh, through the workflow, um, then they start automatically. And other few things which uh, we were able to achieve over this time was uh, like we we were able to uh, restart the jobs if uh, the job didn't finish based on the restart flag. And uh, there were some job canceling issues that uh, j when job is running, the, if there is a timeout uh, between the client and the server, the job was getting canceled. So we we were able to build, um, like handle that error and uh, resubmit the job immediately if if it you know, it's canceled. And even like recently, I'm able to resolve that issue that um, if the client uh, server communication failure happens, it it it's not going to cancel the job. So, Raminder, when you say efficiency in that last slide, is that that's the efficiency of the jobs moving through the queue? It's not the efficiency of, of you know how well the job actually runs itself. No, the in this the efficiency is mainly like if you are running manually. Right. You, you have to wait for a few hours before you start the next job and. Um, other things are you there uh, there can be possibility that you start the job with wrong parameter files or because there are multiple jobs running uh, in parallel so it's uh, human manageability mainly so versus uh, the workflow is able to manage uh, the like multiple jobs uh, able to connect the right inputs to um, uh, to the right outputs so actually write outputs from one node to inputs of the another node. So that that's what uh, I mean by efficiency on that slide. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. So another thing uh, um, which uh, which is really important for another projects I feel is uh, to share the lessons learned. So we are currently working on. Um, Migrating from Ranger to Trussell's because you know, Ranger may go away uh, next year. So uh, there are certain steps uh, um, like the libraries, the MPL libraries are different uh, on different machines. Even uh, the PBS scripts uh, vary. So uh, there's a learning uh, uh, curve uh, for this migration. So we started. Uh, this process in August, and yeah, we we are pretty close to running the production run uh, on Trussell's. And so there were other challenges like the, how the scratch directories are on Trussell's versus how things are on Ranger. So these these are few things uh, uh, which you learn uh, during this migration process, and uh, uh, then like. As I, uh, my last line uh, says, so uh, the best way to find out uh, a solution is uh, uh, create a XE ticket and uh, 
uh, like the admins are really uh, willing to help and normally you get a response within few hours or maximum in a day so yeah i have uh, i have really good experience working with the um, the admins so the, so next uh, uh, I, I just want to cover uh, the future goals so uh, so our now first goal is to run on trust cells um, so which may happen uh, um, early next year um, so other things is uh, so there are certain features uh, which we want to work together with the um, group so uh, the group is uh, um, will planning to continue their um, Ravta, Apache Ravta uh, support so for enhancements or for new developments uh, um, so that's that's the current plan right now to um, provide uh, um, like if there are failures intermediate failures uh, so uh, so we can start the workflow from certain point uh, so next is uh, how things will be with the uh, stampede uh, so because um, so this group is uh, using uh, ranger heavily and uh, want to use stampede so uh, our plan is to uh, see how things are uh, on stampede and how uh, how the grid um, middleware will be and to evolve with that and provide solution for this project as well as uh, uh, other projects um, which are associated with the, um, the Rafta project. Other few things which uh, um, we want to automate to the file moment uh, uh, using Globus Online or any other uh, file moment uh, um, sources available. Um, other than that, we want to um, do post processing on uh, Slack resources. So I'm uh, I started to work with the uh, Slack to see how how their security requirements are and how we can um, use uh, how we can run workflow directly there. Another plan is to um, use uh, Garden uh, to um, for post processing. So that's um, so that like when you are running things on uh, Russell's if we can parallelize uh, some of the post processing steps uh, on garden uh, while the simulation is running so other than that I, uh, I I would like to acknowledge all my team members and um, thank you all for listening to me Ramender, thanks. That was a really, uh, a really nice talk. Um, Sergio, did you see any questions come in from the audience via chat? Um, let me check again, but I don't see anything. Um, um, Nancy, would you like to have, or maybe Ramender should give control back to you, Nancy, and so you can stop the recording and everything? Um. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can do that as a presenter. You might have to do that once. Okay, uh, well then, uh, Raminder, why don't you present, uh, transfer the control back to me? So Nancy has to do it. I already made the Nancy the presenter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, let me, well, oh, you know what? I might be able to stop the recording. Yeah, there's the I, I, I don't want to kind of go through this while everybody else is on the, the call. I mean, we still have uh, uh Opportunity for questions for uh, for Ramander. Right, I'm just saying when the time comes. Yeah. Okay. So I might be able to do it. Actually, it's like the button's not grayed out. Um, okay. Um, so the um, so, so there are a, a, a lot of different astronomy um, slash telescope projects using Exceed and new ones new ones planning to. Um, as well, what was your? It was nice to hear that your experience with the help desk was so good, Ramander. I mean, that's always that's not always been the case, and it's always good to hear that. So, um, so that that level of turnaround is terrific. Um, for some of the other DES projects, 
there have been some questions about whether Exceed can really be the production environment for activities where there's an expected nightly turnaround and you have to process this many, many images every single night or the telescope takes new ones and then there's new images coming in and whether we can be part of that kind of production pipeline um, or not. It sounds like things have worked out very well for the simulation um, working group at, uh, at Michigan. Uh, I, I expect maybe they have kind of less stringent timelines on the, the processing, but it sounds like the work you've been able to do with the efficiency and the scheduling, um, you know, might be something that, that maybe the other groups could use to make Exceed um, seem more production-like, you know, if you could farm out the jobs automatically and kind of get this guaranteed turnaround that you need for some of the apps. Yeah, uh, fancy during this, uh, like, the in process, I've learned uh, there are certain file system uh, challenges. So, um, so the group was able to change uh, some of their code to uh, fix uh, any uh, file I/O issues. And other things uh, which um, which is still challenging for us is uh, some types of uh, MPI failures. So, uh, we are working. Uh, on those things and trying to make it uh, make the code more stable. So the, what this group did is uh, took the standard code and uh, tried to optimize it for uh, for such things. So yeah, there are challenges now and then, but uh, I think um, um, now we uh, we have really good working uh, and chemistry and we are able to resolve things quickly and restart the workflows and um, try to build uh, improvements to the workflow which which uh, improve the whole process. Are the workflows something, they looked awfully complex, are they something that the, the end researchers see? Are they kind of hidden behind the scenes? I mean, who's the, the, the user community for the, the interface that you're working on? So it's created by me. Like uh, I created the workflows, but um, so and right now I'm controlling. But I have given uh, uh, so one of the team members uh, I've uh, showed him how to do all this, and uh, I think he he understood. So the plan is uh, to hand over um, the whole workflow execution to them um, as soon as possible, and. Uh, then let them control everything. Okay. Nice to see, Suresh. Like a couple of things. I guess, like as Ramin did, like an elaborated one thing is, like as you said, like this is a good success story. Like you know, nicely, we should take back the lessons to other communities. Uh, but also, like you know, here one thing we should see and get more proud of this ECS request. The success story is. Uh, as Ramin was saying earlier, like you know, the, the 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 developers were very much like you know Brandon, Matt, and others like the Cassis team were very much like willing to change the codes, which hasn't been the case in other astronomy projects because of the nature of legacy and long running. Like you know, these are long time codes in astronomy community, so uh, they have to get adapted to a little bit of lustre file system and the parallel file system kind of issues. And then second thing is like uh, the, the simulation working group use case is slightly different than the other astronomy use cases like DES, LSST, one ODI, and so on. That like you know in this case they were not a streaming data coming in on a daily basis and running it. This is more like a uh, a big research group doing a preparing for a large scale experiment. Uh, okay. And then the end user community is those researchers. They are not trying to widely uh, reach out to the community to use these workflows. So. The goal is the data will be widely accessible, but the workflow executions are for this research community. Yeah, thank you. Great explanation. Yeah, I, I thought that the use case probably did differ some between the, the live streaming data from the instruments, as you say, makes it a little bit um, you know, less less problematic as far as production turnaround. Yeah, and uh, so just another, so we will be testing more on ODI data from January. So we, uh, there's a pipeline um, being installed on Lone Star, and uh, the live, um, the daily data is uh, already started to move to Indiana uh, from the telescope uh, for ODI project. So yeah, 
uh, will have more experience uh, from uh, next year how how we are able to process uh, the live uh, or like the daily data right odi is the one degree imager project at a uh, kit kit peak i think in uh, yes. arizona right so uh, it, it's nice that the Indiana team has experience with at least two different telescope projects now. I think it helps tremendously being able to jump in and help a PI um, when you're, you know, you have some experience with such projects previously. Um, questions that, from the audience for Ramander, for David. Well, I'd like to thank both of our speakers today for preparing, especially at this um, at this busy time of year. Very interesting talks and really some tremendous um, speed ups for the principal investigators. So uh, it, it's it's really nice to see the work pan out so exceedingly well for these two ECSS projects. Congratulations to both David and Ramander. Um, our next symposium will be January 15th. Um, so so stay tuned and we'll look forward to seeing all of you on the call then. Thanks everybody.